Legico Legislative Council predecessor of Uganda Parliament. Uganda Legislative Council, known as Legico, was the predecessor of what we now call Parliament of Uganda prior to independence from the United Kingdom. When I was growing up, I used to hear my father and his friends talking about Legico. I didn't know what Legico was all about until later when I realized that Legico is a place where the so-called wise man get together to formulate a policy that govern a state. It was very interesting at that moment when we were growing up and growing up in itself was fun which our generation did enjoy. Legico was a small and its members were European. Legislative power at that moment was limited. All important decision coming from the British government in Whitehall. The first meeting was held on the 23rd of March, 1921. Legico was created by the colonial masters in 1920 via an order in council. It was made of colonial governors as president, four officials, namely the chief secretary, attorney general, the treasurer, the principal medical officer was also a part of the governing body. These two nominated non-officials who were H. Hunter, a lawyer from Kampala, and Lewis, a manager of East Africa Company. Their intention was to have three non-officials from the business, one representative of the planters and genus, and one Indian. The Indian wanted a representative in the Legico, equal to the European. This was refused, denied, on the ground, according to the colonial government at that time because representative in the Legico was not based on any community group. This tells you that the Asians that came with the British was a British project. They were part of the colonial era and they inserted their influence by demanding representation in Uganda Legico. 
And this is something that should have been thought of a long time ago. If you were a project or a part or a parcel of the colonial era, how can you become a ruler after independence? We have failed to understand that project up to today. And in that process, we had Asians who were part of the colonial era, became the players within our society. And they started demanding representation in our system. In 1921, the number of Asians in Uganda was 5,000. The Europeans' numbers was 1,000. The vacant Asian position was filled on a temporary basis by R. Ranton, who was not a resident in Uganda, but had hostage in Mityana, 48 miles west of Kampala. The first Indian member in the Legico was nominated in 1926 and the second member was appointed in 1933. They were appointed in their personal capacity. Later, a few Indians were added in 1946. The number of European and Asian members was increased to three each. It was clear that the colonial masters came with the Indians as a part of the project. You just ask your son, why should an Indian be appointed in Uganda Legislative Council, if they are not a part of colonization process. There were some concern about the power of Legico from Buganda. In 1921, Dawoodi Chua, King of Buganda, and Sir Apollo Kabwa wrote a letter to the colonial governor questioning the legislative council power to make law in Uganda. In the letter, made reference to Article 5 of Uganda Agreement of 1900, which is effect meant Buganda had complete self-government in terms of administration and any law made by the colonial applied to Buganda only if it does not conflict with the terms of the 1900 agreement. Don't forget to subscribe 
so that you don't miss your daily source of information on Uganda. Let me be clear and let's get started. The British government declared Buganda a British protectorate in 1894, following a visit to Uganda by Sir Gerald Porter as a newly appointed British Special Commissioner in 1892, expanded the protectorate, and two years later, Bunyor, Tor, Ankole, and Busoga, and other parts of Uganda were added via the treaties. The first African member of the Legico came in 1945. Three African representatives who joined the Legico were sworn in December 1945. They were Michael Ernest Kawalia, Kagwa Katikiro, Prime Minister of Buganda, Peter Nyangabayaki Katikir of Bunyoro and Yekonia Zerobam Marusale, Secretary General of Busoga. Those are the people who were in the process of developing Uganda in their own capacity, and we should honor them for that contribution in that long war to freedom. In 1958, they elected a speaker to preside over the Legislative Council. In fact, it was not an election. He was appointed by the colonial governor and later on the first direct election, election of African representative members were held in 10 constituencies. The election was then supervised by Mr. Allen. The actual figure on that register was 600 and 26,046. And those who actually cast their votes were 5,336. Uh, 5, the election was flawed. Not everyone participated. Twelve Africans elected members representing various parts of Uganda, except in the case of Ankole, where the district council effectively became an electoral college. Bugiso district council refused to participate in the election. One African One African member was nominated rather than being elected. 
where I was. There was a position of five to be elected members from Buganda. But the election also in Buganda didn't take place. The Buganda government, the Lukiko, advised the people in Buganda not to register for the election. There were no representatives from Karamoja. Six European and six Asians were nominated. The government side had 32 members, while representative side had 30. The political jokes which had been used before is being used today in our parliament in Uganda. The role of Asians at that moment was not looked at properly and today we have the same Asians who had been part of the colonial project still fighting hard to become a threat in Uganda. This is something that our leaders did not count on. It was not properly vetted after we got independence. Whether we wanted those who colonized us to be a part of the system that governs us. Let me be honest with you. If I go to India today, and ask to become a tribe in India, it won't be possible. They would just kick me out the same day. And then one wonders, why should people who can ask the colonial project be allowed to become a tribe in the country they once colonized? It is not only the British government that colonized Uganda. Those Asians who came with the British, whether they were holding a British passport or an Indian passport, they were part of the colonial tools that was used at that time. And the Legico itself should have not allowed these people to be a part of the policy making in Uganda. And we have carried that problem with us up to today. And I hope sooner or later those who are now in the new Legico after independence would once again sit down and try to resolve this confusion that our leaders 
left us in today. And I hope we have learned something from the past that can help us to shape the future. Thank you for listening. And remember, I will be back.